So thanks very much indeed. So, and just thanks, thanks everybody for making this possible today. Actually, it's, it's really good to be here to, uh, to talk about this area. Um, I think it's actually quite appropriate. We're meeting just uh, a couple of hundred yards outside of the uh, historic north gates of the city, um, and talking about the riverside because uh, I think a reminder of uh, well, how, how come this area comes to be what it is today. Um, Leicester, of course, uh, is where it is because it was a bridging point across that river. Pre-Roman, for the Romans, and then obviously the medieval city that uh, grew up uh, very much on the on the Roman pattern, um, and the navigation that, of course, see behind us here on the on the map, was really part of the key that unlocked the development of the city during the late 18th and throughout the 19th century, um, and was key link with the city south obviously down towards London and obviously to the coal fields that uh, help, help, help supply the, uh, the energy for the, uh, for, the uh, for, the, uh, for the for the building of the city during that period. Um, I think uh, I'm very much uh, convinced that um, comprehensive redevelopment has its place, but it doesn't always have its place. And this is one place where it is not appropriate and what's been suggested here I think is something that is very appropriate, not just for the economic times that we're in, but also for the nature of the area that we're, that we're talking about. Something that goes with the grain of the area, that looks at what's there, looks at its historic context, and seeks to develop from that in a way that isn't piecemeal, but in a way that is reflective of the character of what we've inherited from previous generations. Some of the most successful uh, regeneration in Leicester has actually adopted that model. Uh, some of you will have been around long enough to remember some of the things that happened in the city centre. For example, the, the area around Lesby Lane, Cart's Lane, uh, all of that area. Uh, and the St Martin's development that actually you know, filled in, uh, in backland in that area, was very much in keeping with the grain of the city centre. And I think that sort of model is one that's very appropriate, not just for the time, but, but also for the sort of area uh, we're, we're talking about here. And um, I'm very grateful for the work that um, Ash Sakura have done, and obviously for that example from the Remigo Blueprint. Um, and I just want to say, and we're uh, now on, uh, I think, is, am I on? I'm day 92 of my, my other yeah. uh, yeah, I think I'm on day 92 and counting down towards the first 100 days, and looking beyond that first 100 days. And as I look beyond that first 100 days, we just want to give an absolute commitment on behalf of myself, my assistant, Ted, uh, is here today, but obviously on behalf of the City Council staff as well, and Deborah and her, and her colleagues, to say that we do very much welcome um, this approach to this, this area. We do welcome to going with the grain of the area. We do commit ourselves to tactical interventions, I think is perhaps the best way of, of describing what I think we, we can most usefully do, tactical interventions, to help make this sort of vision possible. And I can also assure you uh, of a determination actually to be bold in doing that, because if I have been critical of the Council over recent years, it has been, that it has been to me. We've just come to actually intervening to make things happen, and I'm determined that timid we will not be, bold we will be, and that we are absolutely committed to helping make this vision happen in this area.